but it literally was the craziest set of circumstances. And I have the, I just, I already respected her so much, but I just like can't even handle how much I respect her now. That's, that's a great story of, of relying on each other and yeah. how much we support one another. Were you, so did you end up getting a, a positive COVID test? No. no, I got like three negative COVID tests and turns out it was probably just a stress fever. Yeah. Um, stress fever. Probably like six long production days. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a stupid story and it doesn't stress me out at all. <laughs> uh oh. Jeez. Cinna Therapy Podcast with Sam and Mitch, her, her dad. Welcome to the Cinna Therapy Podcast by Inland Film Co. I'm Darian Mack. This is episode 21. In this week's installment, Mitch and Sam sit down with a special guest, cinematographer and filmmaker, Megan Clark. They take a word Megan is heavily drawn to, which is accessibility. They discuss being a woman in film, using a camera as language, overcoming anxiety through filmmaking, working together on a documentary project called Ability, and more. Enjoy. So Megan, Thank you for joining us today. It's cool circumstances with why you're here with us and how it came about. Tell us who you are first, and then we can talk a little bit about what we're going to be working on together. For sure. Uh, my name, I'm just going to say my full name because that's like how people Google me, I guess. Megan Eleanor Clark. Uh, if you only Google Megan Clark, so many different people pop up. So my name is Megan Eleanor Clark. I'm a director of photography based in Portland, Oregon. Right on. Right on. Cool. And um, <clears throat> you've worked on some super cool work. Uh, one with a, a production company or agency that apparently threw Zoom parties and um, lots of drinking games happen. <laughs> so are you able to tell us about some of the projects that you've worked on or clients and some of the, um, yeah, just like give us a little bit of your background on some of the, the work you've given or you work you've done. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> For sure. Uh, yeah. So I think a large part of my career was spent at Blue Chalk Media, uh, three and a half years, which is where I, I kind of came into the, or like was forcefully pushed into the director of photography title, uh, within a month of working there, the creative director who's still currently there and who's like the best boss that I've ever had, Rob Finch, asked me what I wanted to do. And I was like, I think I want to use a camera. And he was like, great, director of photography, hyper underqualified. But um, anyway, so within that space, we did a lot of branded content, commercial and documentary work. And I'm glad that you think that the work that is on the web is impressive because it's it's very outdated and I'm in progress of updating my website right now and my reel. So thank you so much. <laughs> I think we're all in a constant state of like, it's all outdated. We need new stuff. It's yeah. like every presidential term. I'm like, okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get we back need to that this. reset. <laughs> yeah. You know. It's like, yeah. Okay. Obama's gone. Trump is here. And now Joe. 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 Yeah. Um, anyways, so that hopefully will be, maybe by the time this podcast is released, it'll be updated. Google me. You, <laughs> you just, just never know. See. It could take a year. Yeah. But let me think. I think uh, some of the productions I've been involved in that feel cool in my brain still, um, one of the more scrappy ones actually, but the one that's yielded the most, like we almost won a Webby Award for it was a series for time and the uh, Indian Ministry of Tourism. So I spent 40 days in India traveling to, I think it was 15 or 16 different cities uh, with a team of three total. So myself and two producers, one local to India, one um, originally from the States, but who are actually a couple. So I was a third wheel for 40 days, which actually was an awesome way to do production. Um, but that just turned into this like, really sensorial uh, edit that I'm pretty proud of. And I think doubly proud of because when it got launched onto Facebook, a very large number of comments started sprouting up where people were like, this is India. Like people from India were like, this is India, which felt cool. As a person who's not from India, I was like, great. <laughs> um, what else? That is I? awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. I saw, um, 
you know, obviously Adidas, Lilabo, I saw on your site. I'm trying to think of other names that I came across. I could pull it up, but, but just, yeah, like watching the, um, you know, few videos that I came across and seeing screen grabs and stuff and just, uh, being introduced to you through someone who's going to Eastern Washington university up here. Um, it's just, yeah, cool to welcome you from Portland up here to Spokane, Washington. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I, I think when I found out who you two were and then saw what Inland Film was making, I was like, oh, sick. Like, cause Spokane's pretty, uh, not like not on the map, but just like far north and then far east. Yeah. To be in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Like you're the Pacific North East of the West. We have, we are the home to the brand, the great PNW. And yet we're, we're like on the edge. On the edge. Yeah. Literally almost on the edge of Idaho. Yeah. We are, we are at like, we're at state line. Um, like here though, people would consider as far East into like central Montana, the PNW. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like, like Cascadia? Have you guys heard of that? I have. <laughs> that is not. Cascadia, I think, would be, a uh, south. it would be like Bellingham, huh. like down, like through, um, through Portland. Yeah. Okay. Like this like Western. Yeah. 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 So. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Um, yeah, there was all sorts of people proposing states. The stupid state of liberty, Lincoln was the was what this part of the state was originally supposed to be. Was supposed to be Lincoln. Well, I mean, originally wow. when the states were formed, um, this was Oregon country up here, and then Idaho and Oregon both formed and said all of those people in the corner can be their own thing. We don't want to be a part of that. So Washington formed because, because it was stuck between Idaho and Oregon. Huh. Um, there was like a surveying error yeah. for the panhandle, which like Montana technically would have less land yeah. and Idaho would have more. Yeah. The panhandle exists because when they like drew the map, it like came out on accident the way that it did. <laughs> yeah. And this is influencing your filmmaking today. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> no. I do think though, I do our, think our though, listeners really care about geography, they history, really and they really do. Um, yeah. Well, I think that most of like most of our filmmaking friends from the South, like anything up here is just the great PNW, and it and it and it, mm-hmm. it you know, I think as far west as Central Montana. It makes sense yeah. to just lump it all in, but you coming from the Oregon coast. Yes. You're kind of a, of a PNW purist, like. Yeah. Like born and raised in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. I'll accept that. Were you, were you both born in Washington? Yeah. Nice. This area. Yeah. Yeah, Right here. Yeah. I have spent my fair share of time on um, the Washington coast, right at the mouth Mm. of the Columbia. Oh, nice. So like wash, um, Astoria, Oregon and, um, El Waco and Long Beach, Washington. Yeah, that's a cool spot. Yeah, I did. You ever go to the Sioux Western? The have you heard of that? It's like this rad trailer park. No, uh, that you like stay in. So like converted no. small trailers. And How new is through. this? Great question. Because um, f- uh, see, hold on. I just want to. I just want to comment on this. I feel like because we're a filmmaking podcast, if you can see this on YouTube having a wireless monitor is kind of just part of set design. Wait, can I, can I see it? I mean, look at that. Is it recording for sure? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's, oh yeah, you can't even see. I couldn't see the red light. The whole on point the, of this is I to know. be able to see. Oh yeah. no. It, got, it made me nervous. Oh no. It's okay. Oh, yeah. No, it's recording. Um, oh, no. The Sioux what? Oh, the Sioux, I always say it wrong. Sioux Wester? Sue Wester. Sue Wester. I think that's the title. I will point out that Portland has been influencing that area, um, like the mouth of the Columbia River, (laughs) Mm -hmm. pretty heavily. Um, Oh, come on, director Mitch Williams. Who tried? I mean, you're just banging glass against. Okay. So um, for me, growing up and going over, and my my grandpa 
read stories about this is this story needs to be a lot smaller than I'm about to make it. My grandpa read stories about the salmon that were going to run that run up through the Columbia River in the month of August. They all run up the Columbia River to spawn. And so mm-hmm. we would go over to fish. Mm-hmm. And it was awesome. Like they're it's still like the biggest salmon run ever. Um but we stay at this really trashy campground. It's terrible. And like that's this tiny little fishing town that has like nothing uh, because people come over to fish and then leave. And so like locals hate everyone that comes in, but a lot of the old, um, a lot of the old restaurants and inns that went out of business, chefs from Portland are moving up and taking over these restaurants and pumping money into them. Mm. And, um, starting their own thing. And so my last time going over there, I was, my wife and I are now married. We have our little one and a half year old son. And we went over to stay at the salt hotel and they took this, the chef and his wife from Portland move up and took over this whole cute little inn right on the port. Um, so you see all the ships, uh, coming in with all their crab for the day. Cute. Um, awesome. And it's a phenomenal chef from Portland who just has his own little pub. Um, and it felt like my childhood in this trashy little town suddenly was elevated because of these um, food artists from Portland. So hmm. um, I just think that the art coming out of the Pacific Northwest is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel, man, so many things that are totally not related to film, but also <laughs> but just like- But it can all come back. That's true. It all comes back. Well, so like gentrification, I feel like living in Portland, <laughs> like obviously that's a huge conversation. And Again, then, yeah. yeah. We're, we, we're going to talk about culture, politics, geography, history. It's, that's what we hit on. This is this, what we, what this is what this podcast, podcast is about. about. Anyways, it's, keep going. No, but that's a good, yeah. Cause like what is film, if not all of those things too? <sighs> yeah. I feel like we all cheers. need cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Thank you. It's a silent <laughs> cheers. Take a sip. Honestly, but knowing that there's a camera rolling, I get like these visceral weird, like I'm supposed to live behind the camera, but like, I feel like I can't like move my neck. It paralyzes you. <laughs> no, literally like I'm going to start turning. Is this yes. black and white though, right? I'm going to start turning many shades of red. <laughs> this is black and white. No, like, no, this is, this is just S log. That's all that is. Ah, um, no, the, it, it is. Be. Oh shoot. I just zoomed in on you. Sorry. <laughs> no, as, as filmmakers, like, so you and I both live in the DP role behind the camera, behind the camera period for a reason. And maybe. it's, it's, <laughs> I think it's just like the fact that we set up a camera over in uh, like far off and for this like, podcast, it's 20 feet away me from me, but it's pointed right at you. That is, you, it can't is even, dead you can't even see a red light down the barrel. As we did. Say. We taped over we the, taped red light the red light and we put a map box in front of it. So you can't see Thank it. You. Yeah. We don't even know if it's rolling. Uh-oh. I literally have no clue. I did. I saw a red light. I went over there. I mean, I'm trying I, to come for her. <laughs> like it might yeah, not it be rolling. It might not be rolling. So, I'm going to, I'm going to trust that. Yeah. <laughs> um, wait, what, were we, what were we talking about? So you brought up gentrification. gentrification. <laughs> Great. Yes. Oh, yeah. What is filmmaking? Gentrification. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> but, but actually, man so many things. I feel like I actually had a thing I was going to tie it back around I'm to. Sorry. I'm no, so no, no, sorry. but I think I <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes. Okay. Actually, this all ties together. <laughs> can I can I pull it off? So, I was thinking about this on the ride over cuz disclaimer, this is the first podcast that I've ever been on. Cool. Thank you. It's yeah, a great you disclaimer. Bet. Yeah. Um, so bear with me, but uh, I maybe talk to myself in the car when I drive and I was thinking about why I like got into filmmaking in the first place, thinking that that might be a thing that we talk about and I wanted to have a good answer. And I realized, I think it's born out of the fact that I was so shy as a kid that it was like the way that I learned how to communicate with large groups of people, i.e. like classroom settings. Uh, but then I was thinking about how weird it is that like a passion can be born out of this like crippling anxiety or this like weird weakness can somehow like translate into passion. And that's bizarre to me still. And that has to do with gentrification somehow, but I I didn't quite land the plane. (laughs) That it's okay. Again, it it will all circle back. I, I imagine it will. No, that's uh that's powerful. That's a, it's a cool 
thought and like perspective and, and for you to have that, uh, kind of realization just uh, like driving. I yeah. think, I think there's something therapeutic about being on the road, especially in the PNW. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's so beautiful up here, but <laughs> Um, I don't, yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. No, 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 but you're, you tied it back really well. Yes. To the... <laughs> Good job. Yeah. So Portland. Yeah. No, uh, that's a really interesting therapeutic take on, on why you started doing this though. I mean, even like tying that into, um, a creative director asking you, what do you want to do? Well, I think I want to, I think I want to take the pictures. Okay, cool. And he like shoves you into it. That makes, I mean, it all, it's all part of a crippling anxiety. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like just learning how to cope with your greatest fears. Yeah. And then do that while doing a job that you've personally signed up for and could totally stop doing if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. And you take on a new set of crippling anxieties and fears by operating the camera. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. I mean, but those are more manageable (laughs) than, than, I don't know. I'm just trying to make a, make a funny joke and it didn't, it didn't land. Um, you've been on a roll. I will. I will uh, yeah. Off camera. All Darian, week, remove it. On, <laughs> just gosh. You have been on a roll all week. Um, with your dad jokes. With my dad jokes. Um, speaking of Megan told us today that she fits in with the dads. The techie dad. The techie dads. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a father, but I am a dad. <laughs> she. I, th- I think that being like dad, the word dad is kind of a vibe, it especially a vibe. when you add techie in front of it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, which which definitely gets us into why Megan's even here in the first place. Um, yeah, and, which which we should probably get to. We've been we've been at this for a minute, so yeah. Um, yeah, we'll let's yeah let's just talk about how we got here. Your friend, Emily, reached out to us uh, proposing a project that she has to work on in partnership or with or for Eastern Washington University. And it has to do with the adaptive climbing community. And you you were kind enough to offer your services as a DP. And you just wanted some extra hands, wanted some some help on the ground uh, while being up here. So um, can you just tell us a little bit about the project? And someday, probably after this podcast is released, people will be able to see the work. Yeah, that is that will be the goal before the podcast is released, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Within a year, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, so my good old friend, Emily, we were assigned to each other as roommates in undergrad. So first day of college, I guess before then, but that's our roots. So it's cool to come to each other as adults with like these different specialties that we've both found in the work that we do. But yeah, she reached out uh, with the hope of creating two different things. One was a really practical set of deliverables for an educational series, which I, I feel like whenever you hear the, the term educational series, it just sounds like so dry and like the worst thing to work on. But we were like, okay, but how can we like infuse it with life and make it interesting? And then the the second deliverable was something that could help make uh, climbing as an activity more accessible across the board. And I think specifically reaching out to the veteran community in Spokane. So that's kind of the like practical terms of the project, but then we wanted to create something that was a little more universal in scope. And I think the still kind of the hope is that whatever we end up creating over the next two days is something that might be able to help garner either like funding or collaboration from a brand that would enable us to be able to tell a story that's not uh, leaning towards inspiration so much as just the everyday act of showing up to do something because you want to do it and highlighting adaptive climbers, which for those who don't know, cause I didn't know before adaptive climbing is uh, kind of an umbrella term for folks who identify as climbers, but are maybe differently abled than, uh, the typical climber. So like maybe you are 
um, experience in climbing from a wheelchair or um, like paralysis or maybe even like PTSD or um, some other like neural atypical experience. But anyways, that's the broad brushstroke of the project. Uh, and then, yeah, Emily reached out to you two and she told me about you two and I thought, that's cool, but they're probably not going to be interested. <laughs> and then uh, we had a few email exchanges and then I talked on the phone with you guys and you were like, here's our wealth of equipment and our labor and we're, we're down for whatever. And I was like, cool. <laughs> and then I met you in person today and it's been good. Cool. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's been good for sure. It's been good. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've, uh, we've enjoyed having you in here and we're excited to help out however, yeah. however we can. So I even shared, um, as you were going through all of the gear, getting the, the camera set up and the easy rig set up, um, I pointed out that I learned something recently about how to set up the easy rig a little easier. And then Mitch stopped me and said, um, I saw that on Megan's website. She does that. And I told you to do it. And then I got really embarrassed. <laughs> I was <laughs> teaching you something that apparently I learned through you as embarrassed as you felt is as cool as I felt in that moment. So thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm We're sorry that you felt embarrassed, but yeah. I, it is. Thank like, you. I feel like I feel like I gave to, you a gift. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to embarrass you <laughs> today. I needed that. Uh, yeah. Anytime, yeah. Anytime. yeah. Yeah. But no, truly it is, I think, um, still being pretty young in this craft, like even self-titling as DP is, is weird for me still. Yeah. Cause like, there's so many far more qualified DPs that exist oh. in the world. And then within Portland, obviously like some super cool DPs that I respect a ton. And then other people that call themselves DPs and I, I wouldn't call them a DP. So I'm like yeah. somewhere in this middle ground. Oh, yeah. So everyone that's not named Roger Deakins <laughs> knows that someone <laughs> ahead of them, like there's yeah. someone better than yeah. them in that craft. And yeah. it's hard. Like, so you just need to remind yourself that of course, yeah, like there's always going to be somebody better Yeah, that's true. until and he like, dies. Well, until you're, yeah. <laughs> I mean, one person inherits the title, like I know. The monarchy. Yeah. yeah. So, God, uh, it is weird. He's though. kind of the Pope for <laughs> yeah. cinematographers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like, but I wanted like, it at a four, but I wanted it at a four. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be in super low light, like in the dark, but I wanted it at a four. Anyway, so, is yes. that your Deacon's impression? Yeah, we, yeah, we, were, I didn't, I, I don't dare attempt, uh, uh, an Make an accent. Yeah, I will not do an impression. <laughs> no, Next on time. 1917, he was going to, he shot all this stuff like in a bunker in the dark. Oh yeah. But he needed it. He needed to close the aperture down. He wanted, so, yeah, everything. Yeah. Like he, it's just had to be out of everything and more. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. he does. Yeah. And then he'll say things with like such certainty on his podcast and he'll like, I yeah. don't know. He just speaks with this like abs, like he has like an absolute truth that he speaks with that I don't, always agree with but then i'm like oh yeah. god can, now, can i yeah now i you think have to second your second i think i yourself. like i feel his absolute certainty um i'm inspired by that hmm. like i question literally everything i do and say and think and so like maybe i should be a little more like deacons and say i wanted it an f4 and then when mitch says but why because I say so, but then like, I feel like maybe, maybe a little more confidence that might not be a good example, but, um, no, no, I think you should definitely do that just because I say so. Because oh, I there, say there's, so. Well, he's there, there so, are like, moments, he has, though. he has like such technical reasoning ground, mm -hmm. grounding his, his statements. Like, um, this is not at all what I wanted to jump into with that. I actually had something else I wanted to respond to, but yeah, now absolutely. we're in, now we're deep into this. Can't go back. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, no. Yeah. We let's, let's go into what we were talking about. I just, I just wanted to, um, I, what I was trying to get at with that response was wherever you walk into, I wouldn't, um, feel like you're inferior to some degree or whatever. Like oh, I, I would, yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to suggest like we're all going to feel that way. And yeah. I think you should carry the title director of photography with, uh, yeah, certainty. all the confidence. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. And, and the like, uncertainty. well, and when you step into the room, you brought it full circle. Like, thank you. You're welcome. Sam does 
Sam does what you do and you do what he does, like if tomorrow um, and Sunday you, you are, you all are going to be working together and you are the director of photography in that, in that scenario, if we called you up and said, Hey, would you first AC or, you know, um, be a second hand or like a, you yeah. know, all hands on deck. Like you would know that yeah. like in that scenario, he's, he's yeah. DP. Mm-hmm. So I definitely I'm just saying wear that with confidence. Like don't a crown. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't, uh, don't hesitate telling yeah. people what your role is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's a good word. Yeah. yeah. It is a, it's a journey for sure. I feel like having some friends that took like the union route, you know, or like a yeah. camera PA for a couple of years. And then they were like, Oh, I can't be a DP. I'm going to be a AD, you know, yeah. like yeah. It's just seeing kind of the like trepidation that they had. I'm like, Oh yeah. I just like took the shortcut around that because I live in Portland where there are all these crazy brand agencies, like internationally renowned Wyden and Kennedy yep. brand agencies with all these cool, creative, local productions and like somehow just kind of yeah circumvented that track which is pretty cool but that feels like the pnw thing unconventional that's a really good to point. that by the way but keep going no that's a good point because i think we, we've been joking about clubhouse but like all of the friends that i've made on clubhouse that are that are um union of some kind in the film industry there's this there's there are these boundaries set like um, like how many hours I am have you a first AC <laughs> yeah. period. Mm-hmm. And I feel like interacting with creative agencies in the PNW and just like going out and buying our own airy camera and shooting whatever I want to shoot. I feel, I feel conflicted about saying confidently I'm a director of photography. Um, Cause like in the world of my friends that are union yeah. and filmmaking, I don't know if I qualify for that, but like that's what I do. Technically, that is what I do. And you like own an airy mini LF. Yeah. Like so, like, I feel like I can say that you're definitely a DP. I mean, I feel like that's just kind of a ticket in it. Like, well, no, I shouldn't <laughs> say that. You, it's just because you own a camera doesn't make you a DP. Yeah. But like, <laughs> of knowing how to invest in a camera. Do you, I'll, I'll tell you what makes you a DP in my mind. Oh. Is you. Um, not only our interactions so far over email and phone calls where you had a lot of really, um, confident technical questions, um, for me that I felt intimidated, but then you walk in here and you want to try on the easy rig, get it sized and then grab this airy and immediately start thumbing through settings Mm. to get it set up your way with your monitor. And suddenly I felt like, Oh snap, like you obviously know what you're doing and I am just going to back off. I'm just the, I'm just the owner of the camera and I'm just going to sit back and let you do your thing. And the confidence that you had in, um, getting it set up your way and understanding, like you didn't understand Aerie has a new auto white balance button. And that was the only thing that you asked a question about, but the way that you asked it made me realize she knows what she's doing and Mm. I'm stoked to be able to learn more from you than just what I've already learned about how to let the easy rig flail freely. That, that serene arm. Yeah. That is it, is it arm. serene or is yeah. it chaotic? It's the, yeah. Oh, oh is it, that's God. I did. That's a, I didn't come. She's even got that. dad jokes. I dad do. jokes. That yeah. is the brand. Yeah, man. Yeah. Love dad jokes. Um, but that is, that is really cool to hear. Cause I think, uh, not to make this all about being a female DP, but it's like, what are the numbers? It's more disproportionate than the military, like to be a female director of photography, uh, which is wild to me. Like, obviously that's changing a ton yeah. right now. Like I'm just going to name drop like Kate Arismendi or Rena Yang, or obviously like Rachel Morrison or like the, mm-hmm. the trifecta of yeah. DPs in my mind right now that are yeah. happen to be women, but like learning how to, and having access to learn how to have that confidence has been like right. a journey that I wish wasn't a journey that I had to take, but nonetheless, I'm happy to be yeah. here. Yeah. When you even have like Reed Morano who directs, oh, yes. but also operates the camera herself. So badass. Yeah. yeah. And who's the female director that's just killing it right now? Um, oh, oh, the writer. Chloe Zhao. Oh, no. Chloe Zhao. Chloe Zhao. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The writer in Nomadland. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, I feel um, like right in front of my face right now, Women are just killing it in film um, and I can't, I, you can't avoid how 
rad these visuals and stories are. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. And then, um, uh, Lulu Wang. Yeah. Uh, with the farewell. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then, uh, Greta. Oh, Greta Gerwig. Yeah. yeah. Gerwig. Or, uh, oh man. Um, wow. Have y'all ever watched, uh, Kelly Reichardt's stuff? Mm-mm, First no. cow. Oh, so oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> so, uh, a 24, I have not and watched it. So, uh, our friend Connor that I was telling you about that's special that effects, special and, effects set and set set decoration. He, um, did all the set decoration and stuff for that film. Oh, yeah. stop yeah, it. So. Stop yeah, it. so me, we haven't me watched on it that yet. Set. Yeah. Get me on that. She's filming another movie in Portland. And he's probably summer. working on it. Can, so. yeah. can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but truly, she's like, she's my favorite director. And I'm, I should remember the name of the director of Parasite, which is... Um, um, Bong... Uh, yeah, Gosh, let's, let's pronounce I that. I always right. defer to Mitch. No. Yeah. He retains names. <laughs> uh, I Bong don't want to. Bong Joon Ho. Bong Joon Ho. Yeah, I it, just <laughs> wanted to make sure yes. I'm not like totally no. butchering it. No, that's good. But like, uh, word on the street is that he like flew to meet up with Kelly and just tell her how much he like, how much reverence he had for her filmmaking. Uh, this is after he won his word Oscar. Word on the street. Word on the street. I'm, I'm, I have heard 89%. Oh, I, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Great. I was like, the, so he, he, loves her, on the he, he loves her. Work. Yeah. And she filmed first. I, I think he's quoted saying like, he thinks she's like the best director yeah. or something like, yeah. or something like there is, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I will, I will at least, um, fall back on, I think the, I think the two most influential cinematographers for me are, um, Reed Morano and Bradford Young. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think Bradford between, Young. I think yeah. between the two of them, um, I have been making very strange artistic framing decisions lately in our mm. commercial work that are like, I just, I, I need to do something weird. I see, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm stuck watching their films and then I need to do something weird. It is and then weird Mitch when that has to, happens. Mitch yeah, has like, to call oh. it out and be like, no, that, um, <laughs> that's not going to work for this commercial this is not going to work. <laughs> there, there have been times. I see what like, you're doing, but it's not going to work. Or like mm. Sam S. Mill stuff and, and Sam uh, McGee here. He frames something. He's like, so what do you think of this? I'm like, yeah, that's way you too. Were that's way. <laughs> you were super hesitant. You were super hesitant. And I had to at least, I had to admit, I understand that what I'm going for is very Sam S. Mill. And I may have just finished <laughs> Mr. Robot, but I need you to tell me for sure that this is not going to work and then we'll move on. Yeah. Do you, okay, here's a (laughs) real talk question. Doing a commercial or like local commercial work, especially where maybe there's like, it's more conventional than like cinematic. I'll use that, that word. But do you ever feel like if you do too much of that, it actually begins to like handicap your ability to exercise the weird stuff that maybe is more like creatively fulfilling? Like you get, like you get real used to the I think traditional that, interview style and then you're like, oh wait, how do I break out of this? So my, um, my visceral reaction to that, my initial reaction is, um, no and yes, no, from the standpoint of, I think Mitch and I have always, um, stood pretty, um, pretty stoically on the creative, the weird creative. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. I think that, I think that Mitch and I have set the precedence that we're going to, we're going to do things the way that we want to do them. And, mm-hmm. and we're going to allow ourselves to be creative. And we've built trust with our local clients looking for local, a, a commercial that's going to show locally. We've built some trust with some brands that will let us just do whatever we want to do. Mm. Yes, there is like like the med spa that we do stuff for. They need it. They need all the visuals to fit a certain style that's already been dictated. Um, they need it to be bright. They need to get the story across to a very specific audience. So we have some um, some rules that dictate what we're going to do. But there's trust that like if we do something strange to them it's for a reason Like we want, we want this to do well. Um, but obviously Mitch and I feel when we are working on the same local stuff over and over and over again, and we haven't like stretched our stretch ourselves with some 
personal project or like a, um, we're going to work on a short film one of these days. Um, we do feel stuck. Like we need to get our brains out of this. And that's what our, our, um, the candid conversation we had on the podcast about making, um, this running ad, pitching it to, um, Nike and a Nike athlete, uh, a Nike CrossFit athlete, um, came stemmed from our desire, Mitch, Mitch and I, but Mitch's idea to like do something weird and creative to get outside the box of all the mm. stuff we've been doing all the time. Mm. And we won an award for it because we were just as creatives. Like Isn't it great when that happens? Boiling over. And you like follow that, that weird. Yeah. And then you, it pays off. Yeah. It like pays off. Yeah. That's like the best, the best feeling I think, or like reminds me like, this is why I got into this line of work, you know? <laughs> Okay. So on clubhouse, <laughs> our buddy, room. our buddy, Wilson Lemieux, um, is talking directly to Ryan Booth and he says, Ryan, w how did you get where you got now? And Ryan laughed. He had a lot of things to say, but one of the most prominent things that stood out was Ryan said, Wilson, I saw on your, on your Instagram stories or your Twitter or something, you posted this video of yourself in the backseat of a car. You're getting this running shot. You're getting this driving shot for an ad and you're he, Wilson's the executive producer. And he's sitting there in the video, looking at the wireless monitor and they got this really sick shot of this car driving and Wilson's yelling. He's so excited. He's yelling and he's like, this is awesome. And there's so much joy in this moment of like getting this sick shot. And Ryan said, I saw that on your Twitter and I would encourage you to just look for those moments mm -hmm. and only look for those moments. Cause like, that's when you realize what you're here for. Mm -hmm. And I've held on to that. Love that. I feel like <clears throat> Ryan is such a, probably shouldn't call anybody a saint, but that's like the energy that he gives off. Like nice film dad. Yeah. There like are a lot, the, there are yeah, a lot the, of those. Like though. the nice film dad. Yeah. It's like, uh, he is until something major political happens and then he's, it's like Jim Mattis. Very specific. Uh, Eastern. Um, like general Mattis was warrior monk and maybe Ryan Booth is, is like, I don't know the cinema monk. The, the, cinema cin monk. the cinema monk. That's what I'm going to call him. I'm going to reach out to the cinema him. monk. Your <laughs> cine therapy. He's he's the uh, he's the monk of our the film community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it? It's weird though. I'm just thinking right now how like how easily like even just the easy rig thing, like the influence that we have on each other and the way that we're influenced by others, like. Yeah. And without even knowing, like, yeah. I, I love so much that that was a thing that influenced y'all. Cause like, if you hadn't told me, I, I would have had no idea, but just like, it's so like, we're so much more connected than we think we are. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Or just like when a filmmaker makes something and then it gets posted online and they're, they're probably just excited to finally have it online cause their clients okay to, and they're like, cool, cool, cool. And then like, you know, a thousand filmmakers watch it and are like, oh sick like i'm gonna try that next time i do it and like refer back to those yeah. visuals in my brain or like ask myself the question like how did they light that or like how did they get talent to do that or i don't know it's crazy totally <clears throat> um i wanted to we were talking about some stories earlier that we all said we need to wait for the podcast oh man we're no. literally going through gear we have a project we're shooting tomorrow and we have gear that we're going through and mm -hmm. then we just started s telling stories and apparently and kept saying wait let's talk about it on the podcast Yeah, did we write those down apparently or? a mat box is like something that could severely injure somebody oh yeah that was another clubhouse thing yeah if you do a top-down shot well we just we learned two things today one never use the uh standard easy rig handle because you guys had a mishap yeah. with that almost. Yeah, almost broke my wife's wife. face. Yeah. yeah, can't do that. Yeah. And then the other one was, uh, yeah, LMB mat box, top down safety cable that for sure. I think just any mat box, top down. Sounds good. You know what? The So we were using the LMB at the, the 
um, construction materials, mm-hmm. manufacturing plant. Yeah, Knife River in Harrisburg. The LMB is the only matte box that didn't seem to go on the lens. I didn't feel confident about it being tightened on the lens because it did pop off at one point. But the Bright Tangerine, the, the, the very inexpensive Bright Tangerine that we have, it seats on the lens and tightens down and I feel like it's on there. But the LMB, I always had a question of whether it was tightened on there. That's really unnerving because the, it's an airy product and it's so expensive and it's so high quality when you feel it. Yeah. But I feel like that speaks to what we were talking about earlier, which is like there are certain pieces of gear that are so helpful, especially when you have a team of people with you. Yeah. So when you're coming from the grassroots, like two person dive bar, not that you guys are a dive yeah. bar, but in like the best sense of the term hey, dive we're, bar. We're, we're about it. I, like, like, you're I like, like the dive bar yeah. vibe. Yeah, We'd like have Miller lights out here right now. That, you is, know, that yeah. is so true. Yeah. But yeah, you're like configuring <laughs> camera bodies to I see wish your it needs. Was a Miller and, light. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's no, cool. Got... I like uh, Coors Light. That's okay. My, okay. I don't know. I have a gluten free beer right now, which just feels yeah. both of us do. So just feels sad make fun to of us. Say, is it like know? celiac or is it like uh, just a? Uh, well, in, <laughs> my wife is celiac, and mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a very very long story. That was a really personal question. You also totally don't need to answer that. Uh, I I will one hundred percent answer it, but it will take another hour of our conversation to really get to the bottom cool. of this. I'll just tell you, gluten like started making my chest feel tight. Oh, <laughs> like shallow breathing. <laughs> oh no! And then when I finally got the allergy panel, it's like, oh yeah, gluten and barley. Um, yeah, you shouldn't have. And so I was like, well, does that so show does that itself in scotch? scotch? Uh, oh no! And so, but I did have some scotch last night. Did you really? Yeah, How's took, your breathing? What did you good. have? Open, because I wanted to drink something nice. If I was going to have scotch, I was, you know. My my it's reaction so. to that is is um, I, I'm living vicariously through you and your and your scotch. So I miss it. So, Oban was a trigger for remembering that Oban was super cheap in Italy when we went there a few years it ago. It was, and. That was a trigger for remembering you were about to tell a story right before we started the podcast oh. about being in Italy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was the, oh man. And then the this circle. story is coming from the PNW. <laughs> it's like cringeworthy. Um, I think, I think that story, you know, it, 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 I was going to tell it because you told me a really horrific Oh yeah, a horrific story about having to uh, convert the FS7 from PAL. oh from PAL yeah uh, PAL yeah a short version of that story is that we sh- we we shot a project for Artlist, which is based out of the UK Israel they're in Israel in Israel oh. yeah yeah oh, and they nice. so we we filmed I a couple of, remember what country yep. and now yep, you're like in it was Artlist oh it and, was Israel and we we f- so they had a uh, we did a we helped with the documentary that they were doing on some of their music artists. And Kevin Graham is here in our town. Um, he's a, a, a composer. We shot some stuff. It had to be in PAL, 25 frames per second. Um, wow. Forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Mitch went out solo the next week or the next day with the FS7 and it was stuck in PAL and he had to call me and ask. He has a like the full, all staff, from this company is ready to get a group shot and they all need to go and get back to their jobs right now. And Mitch is stuck and he can't figure out how to get it out of pal. And the Sony menu was like the worst. Yeah. Oh, and this is the, yeah, this is speaking to how, when one of you is not present for a production. Yeah. Shit can happen. Yes. Yeah. Not all the time. Cause obviously we're all capable individuals, but like sometimes yeah. yes. or just, I don't know feels like uh, your safety net is gone. You yeah. Know? Or absolutely. that person that you can look to while you ask other person questions to yeah. make sure like, is this the question yeah. you should be asking? Yeah. Them? yeah. You guys glance at each other a lot when you're talking. We do. Well, well yeah. because you, you say something and it's like, I, I remember, I remember. I get that. You know, <laughs> it we, makes sense. We, it's, you say something and it's like, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. We, we, we lived that. We, yeah. we've been there. <laughs> no, it's so you, good. You hit a lot of like, um, topics or like, you know, um, yeah, points of interest. You're or, good at you're good at expressing um, 
emotion through a story. So like you, you'll say something that like, you know, is a pain is going to be a pain point for someone else. Yeah. And that's why I'm looking at. Yeah. Well, I I think deep down, you know, like you guys have experienced this too. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And and you are like, it's a good thing. You're, you're it's looking for thing. like, can you empathize with that? Can mm. you, can you, so anyways, keep going. You, oh, you yes, were yes. in Italy, I think. Oh yeah. Okay. And then to set this up. So my, um, like production partner, business partner, uh, Kylie yogurt spelled with a J yogurt. Um, she's based in New York. She's phenomenal. Uh, but yeah, so we were in Italy during the pandemic. Uh, we were Say it quietly. mandated oh, no. to quarantine for two weeks, which we did. So we were in an Airbnb together for two weeks in Rome. And we like were so strict personally. Like we didn't leave the Airbnb. We didn't walk around the block. We exercised in the Airbnb. Oh, what a time. So anyways, we're in Italy. We're on production for this this brand, which we've been working with for the last couple of years. And everything is going better than it should have. Like it was long days for sure, like pretty arduous in a lot of ways, but we were down to the last day. And I remember, so I'm wearing the hat as like director DP, but we have a full crew with us, you know? Um, I remember going to bed the night before the last night of production, thinking to myself, and I'm realizing I should never do this again, thinking to myself, you know, I think we have everything that we need to tell the story that we need to. And tomorrow's just gonna be like a really delicious bonus day to collect some visuals that are important, but like we don't 100% need them. I go to bed and I wake up uh, at 3 a.m. with a low grade fever. And so I whip out my phone and I text Kylie and I was like, Kylie, when you wake up in the morning, we're not gonna go on production. I'm gonna quarantine in my room. We have to get everybody COVID tested as soon as we can. Just assuming, like I was like, I haven't had a fever since I was in high school. And when that happened, it was swine flu. So like, this has got to be coronavirus. Um, So we got the entire crew tested within a few hours of waking up. They had a doctor come to my room. I got tested. Everybody came back negative. Uh, And then Kylie managed to get a DP to fly down from Italy within like 12 hours and restructure a whole new additional production day, extend crew, which had all been flown from Rome to Southern Italy. And uh, she pulled off and directed one additional production day with no additional support. And uh, I just like was in my bed (laughs) trying to like text her like suggestions in between long naps, but it literally was the craziest set of circumstances and I have the, I just, I already respected her so much, but I just like can't even handle how much I respect her now. That's, that's a great story of, of relying on each other and yeah, how much we support one another. Were you, so did you end up getting a, a positive COVID test? No. no, I got like three negative COVID tests and turns out it was probably just a stress fever. Yeah. Um, stress fever. Probably like six long production days. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a stupid story and it doesn't stress me out at all. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. Jeez. <laughs> I know I was like, man, but yeah, I think if I learned anything in that moment, it's like, even if you do everything you can to take care of yourself, like six production days back to back is probably not the best idea. Like, maybe four production days and then a down day, five production days and then a down day. Yeah. Um, and then also like, like thank God Kylie was a part of like that this little core team. Cause if it had just been me hired by the brand, like I don't even know what I would have done, you know? Wow. So like partnering with somebody who like is in it with you as much as you are. Yeah. Like finding something equitable with another person yeah. is like the best and it makes it more fun. So yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to one up your story there. Oh, yeah. You did. Just, that's that's did. what you said yeah. earlier. We told that story and you said not to one up you, but here's the most like, stressful thing you've ever heard in your don't life. Don't say anything more. Save it for the podcast. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. COVID. I know. Let's. Just like a moment of silence for yeah, yeah. for that, for all of the, <laughs> the troubles it's caused. Yeah. Although yeah. I feel like we did talk about how. It seems like either people, 
uh, had zero work for all of 2020, or if you're like a small local production company of less than like three people or an individual contractor, it might have actually been like your best year. Yeah. 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 Yeah, We were, we were talking about how we were fortunate last year and kind of went off the map in social media um, because we had uh, like, I don't know, our, our hearts were with those who didn't have as good of a year, you know? So like yeah. we had plenty of colleagues across the industry, uh, locally and, you know, across the country, across the globe that were hit hard and didn't have work for a long time. So, uh, so yeah, it's, I'm, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, you know? So getting uh getting that vaccine roll out going and and uh feeling like the world is starting to pick back up so mm-hmm. yeah so i'm not that every things will go back to quote unquote the exact normal but yeah yeah so but there is something cool about if I mean, not that coronavirus needs to be a lesson, but if there has been a lesson within production in my mind, it's like, it's actually so cool to take a two week break in between productions, like just as like a safety mechanism. And I know not everybody can afford to do that, but just like before and after production, like two weeks before you're like intimately around other people, that downtime or that like negative brain space has felt really awesome. And like makes me question like, was I working more than I should have, you know, prior to COVID? Yeah. And then you, I've, I've, I've grown to value my, my personal time with family and friends. Like when I do get to, when I do get to engage with family one-on-one, I, I feel like I've, I've risked, I have a newfound respect of what it means to be together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, <clears throat> definitely been a year to remember and forget. <laughs> <laughs> remember and forget. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm um, yeah. We're excited to, work on this adaptive climbing project, get Sam out there with you and see what, see what you do with the camera. So you'll be the first person to operate the camera in a professional setting outside of either one of us. That's oh, true. Oh, honored. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So, that's no. true. I'm not totally worried about it at all. <laughs> Okay, great, great. No, I'm like, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Um, no, I'm so excited to be able to work with you guys. Also just to like connect. Cause I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not like so hard to connect with other filmmakers, but also just to like connect and then also have like enough common ground for something like this to actually yeah. just feel natural. I was like, Oh, a podcast, like, okay, let me interview questions, you know, but official. I don't know. Yeah. You two yeah. are chill. And yeah. I appreciate that because there's a lot of I'm not glad. chill in the industry. Sometimes there are a lot of not chill. Yeah. Unfortunately, and, um, this podcast, um, has, I think been, been the gateway to some pretty close friendships for Mitch and I, mm-hmm. um, there are a few people who, um, Cameron Hotchkiss is the one I always go back to. It was our first real solid interaction with someone sitting down in this podcast format. And then, after that texting phone calls, um, working together, we've become really close friends. So I think that, um, the reason that I like having a table here with microphones and lights set up and like encouraging people to sit down on the podcast with us, it, um, it has been the start of really cool friendships Mm -hmm. in the film industry. Cause like you said, some people are not so chill in this industry. It's, it's the start of friendships and it's also like, um, a way to like break down that wall or barrier of like, I'm a filmmaker and you're a yeah. filmmaker or whatever. And I think yeah. whatever your roles are. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, as you say, people are not so like not always chill. I think, um, people kind of like want to hold their cards close to them often yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. And 
as you said earlier, like it's amazing to know how much you have an influence on somebody else or they have an influence on you without even knowing it. Like we all influence one another. We all like support each other in this weird yeah. web or yeah, um, crazy yeah. ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I think like um, breaking down that barrier or wall and like just having an honest conversation about the trials that each of us have out on location or, yeah. or in, you know, with premiere, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, like we all, we all experience these same things and like, yeah, um, we all experience issues with premiere, but not any yes, other editor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, we have, we experience, uh, different things and we yeah. and then we learn from somebody like yeah. uh that a matte box could cut your face wide open and then we decide you know we probably need to have a safety safety mechanism for that if we're going to do top downs yeah. Yeah. but Pro-life yeah tips. well yeah. and even like to add to that i think that i think that shaping the beginning of our relationship in this way um starts off this friendship with an air of respect for one another. Mm -hmm. Like, would you be on our filmmaking podcast? Um, gives this assumption of an elevated conversation about what we're doing. And so like, um, I think it, it begins a friendship with this, this assumed respect for what you do, uh, and for what we do. And like it, it levels the playing field immediately with like, a respectful ground that um, I think has formed a lot of the friendships that we have with people in this film industry. Mm. I feel, I feel that I felt very respected walking right into this bank building next to Taco Bell. Is that okay to say? <laughs> yes. Yeah. The old bank next to Taco Bell. The it's, old bank building. It's a pretty sick space. I, I feel like you guys should do like a, like crib tour at some point for you too. Cribs. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very strange hearing you say that this is the second production company <laughs> location you've been to in the last week with a bank vault. Yeah. That is a true story. Yeah. Two production uh, spaces, two bank vaults. And both times me asking, is that real? <laughs> and they both have been real. So yeah. I don't the know only why thing I that is, the camera when I said that. that is questionable <laughs> It's good. Um, our buddy Cameron wants to know if the tubes are real. Yeah. The tubes for the Because this is an old bank building and there's a drive up. Yeah. With tubes. Are and they? the tubes don't connect to anywhere inside the building that we know of. It's suspicious. Was and, it a bank before? It was like 20 years ago. Oh. Yeah. We still have, we still have random old crazy dudes that will pull up income like try to open the door and ask is this still a bank yeah no it's not and i'm <laughs> concerned as to why just say, yes. it's been this long since you've come to your bank yeah. i do feel like i'm i'm getting a lot of value when i walk in here it's like very yeah it just feels rich <laughs> secure oh you should cash <laughs> it reliable. in reliable yeah um yeah but also i i also love <laughs> How many times you guys said friendship uh, a few minutes ago? And I was like, oh, I guess we're friends now. Yeah. Great. You're like, forced into <laughs> yeah. like, It's friends. a good thing that our friendship is. But oh, no, it's, it, it's, I think oh, it's like an man. adult. It is like weird to make new friends, but I can confidently say that I have two new friends as of today. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We have, we have yeah. one in you. So thank Ooh. you. And yeah. I like, I like the term. I, I think I like the word friendship in, ter- in the film industry because I have met so many people that are not chill. Um, yeah. and, and, and I do use the word friendship because like every single person that we've had on as a guest on this podcast has wound up to be someone that I can share painful industry stories with. And, you know, you find common ground and I know that like, if I tell you the story, you'll get it and you're not going to crucify me for sharing it with you. You'll, yeah. you know, um, and every, and I can go back through, our list of people we've had on the podcast and see like, that was the first time we really sat down with Jordan or Cameron or, or, um, Jari for instance. And yet, um, I text them all the time now. And so, um, I find it fascinating that formally, um, forming a conversation on a podcast started, um, 
a cool filmmaker relationship. Yeah. And I, it's, you know, to me, you know, when you get to know people like, like this and in this format and this capacity, a level of trust is built up. Yeah. So if it comes the day that we either need to hire a friend, you know, so to speak as like for, uh, as a crew member, or we have a job that we can't make work out, but we know we can trust someone like you to like, like, Hey, could you come in and, and, uh, handle this, this job? Um, you know, those are, there is value in that, you know, yes, there value. Is. Yes, there is value. <laughs> it is every time somebody says, I, I've been thinking about this a lot, like hiring friends or like, working with, I mean, you two are technically family, right? Yeah. Yeah. Brothers-in-law. Yeah. 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 I always, (laughs) and I know it's not always the case, but the word that comes to mind is always nepotism. And uh, I've been thinking about that a lot in terms of like the way that crews are hired. And this is like not even really related to what you're saying, but just following that train of thought, like um, friends hiring friends and how often that can lead to like a lack of diversity in crew been thinking about that a lot or like hiring crew thinking about making sure it's a diverse crew but then is that like actually in service of the people that you're hiring yeah so just in having friends that are different than you that you work with so like i don't know like working with a variety of like men women totally well and and that was one of the things um like even today we we wanted you be on this podcast and you happen to be the first woman the first female on the podcast yeah (laughs) Uh, but i also didn't want to bring light to that prior to the podcast to make you think that like the only reason we want to have you on here is because like there's a like that's not yeah that's but now in full transparency i did wonder that yeah but that's just part of the game um just for us go ahead sorry i i was just gonna say like i try to come at it from the the perspective of like Reed Murano, I've been following her for years. Um, and very first thing I fell in love with was first three episodes of Handmaid's Tale. Oh my gosh. Um, and I was just like, this is unbelievable. And, um, and then, um, I think you're alone now. Um, right. That's, I think we're alone. I think we're alone now. I, th- I was thinking, I think you should leave. Now. <laughs> I think you should leave. <laughs> I'll just, I'll uh, just no. get <laughs> um, So I, uh, what a good. no, so I, um, I had, um, <clears throat> she used to post hashtag, I think it was like female filmmaker Friday or something. And then she had this post one day and she was like basically saying how she's done saying like, um, female, like she was yeah. done putting the word like female. Cause she's like, it shouldn't matter whether, I'm a yeah. a woman or not. Like yeah. I am fully capable Yeah, and I make like, I'm a director or, yeah. um, you know, I mean, it's like the Morgan and, Freeman yeah. thought on race. Yeah. 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 And, and so that's, I try to, um, approach it, I guess, with that perspective of like, if you are skilled in your craft, like it is a, obviously from like a diversity standpoint, it's a, a, a plus if you're, you know, uh, the, female or if you not a, a white dude, a, a, not, a white, not dude. a white dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. <laughs> and, uh, but at the same time, like that shouldn't be the first thing that comes out of your mouth because I think that totally. almost like says like that, that makes you th- think that the person's being hired because of that. It's like, yeah. no, I think the person's being hired because they are skilled in their craft. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's really cool yeah. that in a, male dominate dominated industry that she is a woman Mm -hmm. doing this but that she is skilled in this uh specific right uh, right yeah 100 percent. no and it's it's wild too like there have been more times than i can count i think at this point where like there's a story about a woman that i'll just be assigned to maybe with the assumption that i'd do a better job than like a guy would but then it does call into question like well but actually like so and so would probably be better in this situation, but they're a guy. So, but like being hired based off of merit versus just, you know, what body yeah. you happen to have. But um, going back to nepotism, uh, <laughs> it, it is, I think like an industry of collaboration and it's best done with friends in a lot of ways. So then it's like, well, okay, well, who are you friends with? You know, like who do you see on a week to week basis? 
who are you inviting to your podcast? You know, yeah. it's like always a question, but it's also so shaped by like, where do you live? Well, Pacific Northwest, like yeah. such a white space, you know? So how to like do it genuinely and like without, um, oh, what's the word? Like performative. I don't know, without being performative. It's tricky for sure. Yeah. But um, I do love your point about Reed Morano, like not labeling yourself as like, a female filmmaker it's like oh yeah no i'm just a you're a director of photography yeah yeah and I and i can look at you and assume that you know you identify as a, a woman and you are a woman right like Jeez. like like so like <laughs> yeah i'm just saying like i i the but the fact is from like like you're a director of photography and mm. i and i think that that's that's cool and i think that the work that you put out justifies the title yep. and it's not mm. it doesn't um yeah. I, I i would never want to make somebody feel like like oh you're you're being treated one way or another because of your your gender yeah yeah 100 yeah. so. percent. except yeah. when it comes to dad jokes because that's yeah. just oh, well man, you know, that's why top, that's, that's why i'm so confused top. and conflicted is because some of your dad jokes today have just <clears throat> killed not Thank to you. be not to use a violent word, but oh yeah, that's a whole other. I mean, thing. they she are really yeah. nailing it. A woman who is paternal. <sighs> Thank you. Wow, a paternal. You. Pater you have a way with words. Yeah, you could. You could be a good director. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh. No. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, I need to go to the bathroom. And we're either going to pause, <laughs> or you guys are going to keep talking. Just go it. to the bathroom. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Also, Sorry, hey, Gary. what a what's the time check? What time? Are yes, we you need to go soon. What time is it? It's four twelve. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, yeah. Well, we got some time to round it oh, out. Did I just get a sweet email? I don't know. Uh oh. Um, uh oh. Ooh. Yes. Um. Yeah. Anyways, I, that was something. I'm glad that came up because uh, we we talked about you know, you being a, a female director of photography earlier. And then we got started talking about other things and I was like, I want to come back to this, but I also don't oh, want it to seem that what you were when you were like, I want to come back I, no, to this. no, 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 that was oh, something okay. else. Okay. I was just like, I don't want to, I didn't want it to seem like inorganic. I didn't like, I wanted to totally yeah, like question off. Yeah. About, what is it like being a female? Yeah. Yeah. So, which actually, I mean, that feeds into like the project that we're working on tomorrow because when Emily and I have been, because so for context, Emily has a, she's finishing up her grad degree in outdoor rec. Mm -hmm. And I think her focus right now is adaptive climbing, accessibility accessibility and education. So that's kind of her like world right now. Yeah. But when we were coming up with interview questions, I wrote something like, like to be posed to an adaptive climber, like, what is it like being an adaptive climber? And she like came back to me immediately and was like, you can just say, what's it like to be a, be climber. a climber? Yeah. Like they happen to be an adaptive climber, but like, you don't need to say that, you know, yeah. it's just climbing at the end of the day. And I was like, oh yeah, a hundred percent makes sense. But like the way that we categorize things in our brain is like so like our left brain is just so like we just want to put stuff into yeah. a box you know so it's hard to like get out of that but and necessary and for some adaptive climb climbers it may have always been that way mm -hmm. um others it may have been like a recent thing a recent thing you totally. know so um but if you approach the question with how is it to be a climber like in this in, in this uh um you know, scenario that you've presented, then they can pivot and talk about like, well, you know, not having one, like my right leg, like whatever. And you mm -hmm. allow them to like add their own flavor or their own yeah. spice to like what it's like to be a climber with their body or uh -huh. with their mind. Like, yeah. And it just yeah. calls into question, like what does normal even mean? And is that even a thing that exists? Like, yeah, I don't know. Just the way that we tend to break things down. It's interesting. Well, of course it exists, you know. Um, I, I heard. I'm the normal, the standard. Yes, yes. I am the standard. I heard um, a buddy of ours, Jason, the other day um, said, we were talking about um, autism. Uh, his son is autistic. And he said, well, in terms of, of, of statistically typical children, and I thought the word statistically like disarmed me mm. 
Mm. Because okay, yeah. then it's a then it's a for him it's a numbers thing, and I liked. I don't know if that's I don't know how well that would play out in other scenarios, but f- between two nerdy dads, statistically typical children that made sense in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I like, cause I feel like when we use the word normal, like I could be meaning statistically so, but right. that symbol normal is so normal has other with meanings bad that, connotation. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. As a, as a parent, it gets even harder because mm. there are times where you want to say like, why can't you just be normal? <laughs> not right. that you do like, not that well, you Pixar, necessarily do. There's a new Pix, there's a Pixar short where, where the kid, this little kid can fly. Yeah. And the, and the, um, it's neat, but like the dad is really embarrassed about it because people look at him weird and in, and it climaxes with the dad yelling, why can't you just be normal? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the reality is, is like normal is, like whatever you are or like, like, yeah. or like, you know, like, yeah, it's, like, like a, it's a moving target. It's a, yeah, it's like a, literally whatever yeah. we deem in this year is like socially typically normal. It's like, mm. but it changes so much, yeah. which, Oh, Oh, train of thought. Wait for it. Come back to the station. Oh yeah. Okay. So like being normal, uh, going back to the thing that I said about like feeling really handicapped by my anxiety when I was a kid and then like coming into filmmaking. So like, what is it about you that maybe feels abnormal or feels like othering and like, how can, I don't know, just asking the question, like, how can you flip that on its head and use that to like drive you into whatever it is that you want to do? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Cause I think about, so like, we're going to be interviewing Craig DiMartino tomorrow, who's like a really notable climber in the adaptive climbing community. And like, that wasn't, that was a more of a recent experience for him. Like he didn't grow up in the adaptive climbing community. It was because of an accident that he lost one of his legs, I yeah. believe, but like that. And I, I can't put words into his mouth, but just like to ask him like what that experience has been like. And then just to see how he has like grown into this space is such a powerful voice. Like, oh, I don't know. I'm yeah. actually going to back up my thought there. Cause I feel like it also sucks to be like celebrated when you just want to be like, but I'm just this thing versus being like caricaturized into something. So I'm just going to. No, no. I, you asked a good question. I think. Would you have a response to that? I have a few responses that are floating around. I'm going to pee now. You guys keep talking. You answer her question. Oh, the, so the reason that I like your question is that you, you do obviously have some hesitancy about framing his life in this way. Hmm. Um, you don't want him to be, and he may not want to be defined as um, a person who lost a limb and now is like a, telling this cool success story or like a, you know, now has a cool story just because of this limitation. Um, but you're asking the question of like, what in your lives um, may seem like a limitation to you that you're overcoming and using to your advantage. And so I think to, in that way, not only did you express hesitancy in framing his life in that way, but you're also, um, making it like a blanket human experience to be mm-hmm. limited and push past it. That is true. Yeah. Do you, do you have an answer to that? Um, I don't have anything that's concrete that makes sense. I think um, <clears throat> in my personal life, I've been doing a lot of, um, I've been doing a lot of counseling, um, a lot of therapy. And I think that, I think that um, my, experience of just being okay with like going with the flow all the time has kind of dictated where I've landed in life. Um, and I'm, I'm working through a lot of the, maybe the relationships or the past experiences that hinder my ability to find joy in life. Hmm. Um, I think that, uh, I'm, 27, almost 28. 
and um, I'm young. Um, I'm an adult. I've got two kids, um, but I'm learning like what is limiting me from experiencing joy in life mm. and um, pushing past that and accepting accepting the way that life is. Yeah. So I did preface, I don't have a concrete answer and all the answers floating around in my head could like spiral in different directions. But yeah, yeah. No, but I think your point about like going with the flow, I feel like that can be a huge asset to the production space yeah. and the creative space, but it also can like, if un, uh, if, if, if not kind of like wielded a specific way can like allow you to fall into things or productions that you have no passion for maybe yeah. because it's like in service of somebody else's idea or yeah. maybe not something that you would be like, is that something that y'all kind of wrestle with? Cause there's like the business side of what we do. I don't necessarily know if we wrestle with that too much. Mm -hmm. Um, like finding ourselves in projects that we don't necessarily want to be in just because we're going with the flow. Um, I think that Mitch and I just our, our personalities are constantly trying to seek out things that we're interested in stories that we're passionate about mm -hmm. or that like we'll make, we'll, we'll, we will find a reason to be emotionally invested in something. Um, if our, I think, I think we both can see through the, um, potential BS of someone's, um, enthusiasm about something mm -hmm. we can, we can figure out if, if we can get behind it or not. Um, and so I, I don't necessarily think that we've been stuck working on things we don't necessarily want to work on. I mean, there are plenty of, you know, as you know, working in this industry, plenty of projects or time sitting, you know, editing, you know, things that seem redundant or yeah. mundane, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think product videos, uh, we, we get excited about from like the visual standpoint, like mm -hmm. of like everybody wants to make everything look like an Apple, you know, ad or something if it's a product. Um, and not necessarily that you're looking, trying to make it look like an Apple ad, but you want it to be like this level of quality, quality, mm -hmm. like where you can tell that, someone was hired to do that and it's not like shot on an iPhone on a lazy Susan, you know, like I, I it's <laughs> <laughs> like, Has I that happened before. Or? No, I just, I, <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, is that the other setup? I, but I haven't seen well, it. Well, I, I mean, just feel the like, lazy Susan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it plenty of times. I think it's cool. I think it's yeah. awesome that people do that. Oh, I just, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, I feel um, so offended by what you just said an iPhone on a lazy season. I mean. Yeah. No, there's nothing wrong with it. I just think that I, um, like those, the, if, if I had to say any are hard to get behind, it's like product videos are hard in the sense that we are storytellers mm -hmm. and products are hard. Like when it's just a product. Yeah. And well, and just, like a lot of the products that we tell stories about quote end quote are, um, very technical products being sold to engineers, engineers. like, and engineers, they don't, don't care about frills or story. Mm. They, they just need to, to see know. that it has all these holes and uh, in the same spot. Yeah. as the other one. And like, they yeah. want to know that, that everything is technically yeah. accurate. All and the so, applications and you know, what screws it takes, what, you know, whatever. And so, yeah, yeah, those are a little, those get a little tedious because, because we are storytellers and I think we're, we are justifiably stripped in that case of being a storyteller <laughs> because mm -hmm. technical information needs to be translated. But it's like, to some degree, you know, like in the consumer world, you know, our Arcteryx or Patagonia or Columbia, somebody's going to make a video about the backpack 
and it's going to be super technical. So we got this side zipper, we got this side zipper, but then somebody else gets the job of going out and filming somebody running through the woods with that backpack on, like sitting down and like opening their backpack and pulling out, you know, food or a water bottle or whatever. Or in the case of valence, they're (laughs) just going to like take a picture of the backpack deconstructed and the fabric laying on the ground. Yeah. 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 I I feel like there's, and this is speaking from like my limited personal experience, but um, I've found great benefit in like partnering with brands and being willing to do the lifting of like the educational work in order to then build a sound enough relationship to do that, like out in the wild content. And I I like Jari. That's a Jari story. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Who's who's that? He's, he's a a buddy we've, we've uh, made friends with online as well. He does. He does product videos, technical product videos for Sennheiser, Mm. but has continued to express an interest in, in doing commercials and has and has actually worked his way into doing commercials for Sennheiser just because he got in the door with technical product stuff. Yeah, which is like super valid. It like is. I I think to a degree, like there's probably times when it wouldn't really be worth it, maybe because it's less of like a relationship and more of just like a very technical business partnership. But like when granted the opportunity to or like when you resonate with folks more like the people than the brand, but when you like yeah. resonate with them and you're like, oh, I think we kind of get each other. Yeah. Cool. Or like see something and how just, yeah, see like the potential of something. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I feel fortunate in that space right now. Yeah. But it's definitely a process. Yeah. Well, and that goes back to the, the comment of like, you were talking, you were trying to express the ideal of hiring friends. Oh yeah. Um, I think that it's just a, I, for, for Mitch and I hiring someone to, to be on set with us, whether it's an AC or a PA, um, the biggest, um, I think one of the biggest factors of us being interested in hiring someone, paying someone to be there is that we click. And so I think the word friend is a, is a good word, um, for describing, do I feel like I get along with this? Do I want to, do I want to experience this project with this person by my side? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and I think that's been a, a huge determining factor in like not using certain people or like working with someone on set once. And then like, I would rather not hire them just because, well, the way that we talked through ideas was just super not helpful. And mm-hmm. I would rather have, yes, they're technically competent, but I want to have someone that makes it really fun to do this. Um, and so I think I, we gravitate towards people that are more friends the good vibe yeah Yeah, we're looking for a good vibe yeah 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 and that's uh that's why you know tyler c rolls up so we always go back to tyler c yeah with his with his tack vest on velcro straps gear ties whatever we need sounds like a good a good friend oh yeah Yeah. good friend velcro um (laughs) velcro you need velcro straps i got them (laughs) you need (laughs) <laughs> uh, but oh. I, I mean, uh, the, we, we literally needed to, we, you said, I wish there was a waterfall right there. And he whipped out a waterproof <laughs> bag, bag, filled it with water, went up and made a waterfall. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah. So I had to climb like through like a hole, like up through these rocks to get up there. It's pretty awesome. He made a waterfall. And the people that are willing to do that kind of stuff in service of like one shot or like the story. I don't think I'm that person, but I <laughs> love when other people are like, but I don't you, think I'm that person. But you want that person. A hundred percent. Oh yeah. The person yeah. who like maybe has no emotional investment in the story, but they're like, I will stop traffic. I will let yeah. people honk at me. Like, is this yeah. illegal? Probably. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's a, the like, that's a quality of, uh, found in, in a good DP or a good director. Like I am, I may not be that person, but I want that person with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like a delineation <laughs> of roles. I don't yeah. know what kind of person. I, yeah. I don't know. Getting to like Enneagram or something, but what are you? What are you? What do you think I am? Uh, I would, oh, I'm stuck. I, I, I just need you to tell me. <laughs> no, it is a dangerous I... game. <sighs> Gosh, there's, there's part of me that would think, 
Yeah, you're you're like a maybe like a four, six, or nine. Huh? No, am I, I like wrong? That you delivered three options. Yeah, but I had to like your odds, I yeah. had to increase my odds. No, no, that's good. Um, Mitch I, is all about the odds, not the evens. Yeah, no. I am. Um, I I am such a dad. Uh, I mm. am a three wing four, apparently. So close. My wife is a three wing four. Yeah, man, it's like a or a three wing maybe two. Oh, that, I don't is a, know. that is different, but similar. Yeah. I need to ask her. She's a three for sure. Hardcore three. <laughs> I also don't so, know. Yeah. Three. Okay, go ahead. So anyways, yeah. three keep going. Four. I, anyways, I'm, I'm excited about this. Oh yeah. Wait to like talk about yeah. my threeness or. Sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. I feel, I'm, I'm not to offend your wife, but I feel like I, I feel like threes are the worst number because like. It's, it's, I, I, I constantly question my motives and assume that I'm a terrible person and I'm like a chameleon depending on what the demands are of me, which then leads me to wonder at some point in my life, I'll probably wake up, look back and be like, did I actually want to do any of that? Or was it all just in service of this image that I projected of myself that's supposed to be respected by not everybody, mind you, but just like the few people that I pedestalize unnecessarily mm. and they probably don't know who they are and I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it drives me to do things that are fun, impressive sometimes to some people. It's all relative. I don't know. The, um, yeah, like the, what was it? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. So threes and eights are kind of like, but are you an eight? I'm an eight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, talk to me about that. Yeah. Threes and eights are. Uh, <clears throat> eight is like the challenger. Three's the yeah. achiever. Uh, eights in their healthy state, you know, they, you know, they want everyone else to succeed. So they like lift people up around them. Um, in their unhealthy state, they want to tear the whole world down around them. That's why Donald Trump did everything he did was because he's an unhealthy eight. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, like, I'm just, that's just like yeah. who he is. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I was reading a little bit about like how threes and eights coexist because my wife and I are both threes and we're a three and eight. Um, I notoriously feel really weird around eights. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So do you feel weird around me? Is that what you're trying well, to Well, now I'm thinking about it. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. I don't now know. I'm, I don't know. Yeah. So I scored higher <laughs> as a two, technically. Huh. One point high, uh, higher on a two and then eight. And then one point, my eight was one point higher on than a seven. Hmm. So I'm a two, eight, seven, like a hard two, eight, seven. Which isn't, correct me if I'm wrong. It's but not I, possible. Yeah. Because um, technically your wing <laughs> is 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 an adjacent number, like t next to. So but that's, which this is, is why, I, made, why I don't why, think the tests are really that accurate. I which is why with you. Yeah. everyone that knows me thinks I'm an eight. Because yeah. it's an eight and seven, eight, eight with a seven wing. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But the two is there because your growth wing as an eight or your growth number as an eight is a two. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and your yeah. two, your, uh, for a two, the weak number is your disintegrating number is an eight. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, and yeah, I, my dad is a seven. My mom is a two. And so I think you think you'd be a nine, <laughs> but no, you're, you're an eight. <laughs> no, I think that I, I think I, um, <laughs> valued attributes in the two enough that like the, so you say you have like almost some like, uh, do you say self-hatred or do what do you, what was your oh, word? Uh, I mean, uh, sometimes sure. But no, like, no. uh, uh, Oh, like a mistrust of self. Yeah. Like I think there's part of me that dislikes the eight. Mm -hmm. And so I like, I think I seek for the two. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm like, like that I, makes I go after being the two. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, Wait, what are what are you, Sam? I'm a nine <laughs> one. Nice. 
Um, I do, I think, I, I think, I think going with the flow has always been my, my vibe in life. Um, and when I am, when I am not, well, I, it's, it's, it's good and bad at times. My, I think my wife experiences the one more than anyone else. Mitch experiences the one at like my bad times. I get very, very, very specific about specific things. So like, um, the way that our gear is organized on set is very specific. And if Mitch doesn't understand that the screwdriver goes back in that pocket of that box only, um, I will flip out on mm -hmm. set. And then it's, I'm more embarrassed than anything because now I have made someone that I respect feel like an idiot for something that's so stupid. Huh. Um, so like I, I am at my worst when I'm focused on or when I'm focused on things and I go into the one. Interesting. Yeah. It's also especially fun because I tend to have a lot of nine friends and not a lot of eight friends. So I tend to have a lot of four friends. Interesting. Yes. My wife has pointed out that most of the people that I'm like infatuated with their personalities mm. are fours. And I have, mm. I have a tendency to get wrapped up in, um, in the stories that fours tell. Mm -hmm. And so the moment that my wife heard me talking about Wilson, for instance, she's like, I bet he's a four, he's a three, four. And it, um, there's just something about fours that I, I gravitate towards their, their, um, fours the drama of the past tends to fuel them but they don't want to talk about it mm. so mm -hmm. like a really a really dark childhood will drive them as a person but yeah. they never want to talk about it yeah and there's something about the four that i find fascinating Very and i will get wrapped story. up in ideas that they oh. have or projects they want to do or yeah and I feel on the flip side of that, I think the reason why I feel like bad excluding you from, I'm just going to only talk to you now. So the um, thing about nines that I tend to be drawn towards, I think is like uh, <laughs> um, some kind of like openness, uh, willingness to hold uncertainty and really abstract ideas. And I'm not sure if that feels true to you, but like, okay. Does that feel true to you? Um, no, Yes. Um, from the standpoint of that's literally what I've been talking about in, um, counseling lately. Oh, most of my life, um, has been closing a book and moving on, hmm. but yet, um, my entire career revolves around holding complexity of story, mm -hmm. um, in terms of filmmaking. And so a lot of what I'm trying to work through right now is, is dealing with the complexity of, of past that I've never looked into because I love, I love diving into a really strange drama and, um, understanding all of the different aspects of, of what makes it so, so interesting and compelling. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think I, I, maybe my childhood, but maybe just my personality. I love categorizing and putting things into boxes and like making kind of like hard lines around things. But I've realized how not in service of my life and creativity that is. So I've had to like kind of break out of it. And I think I was inspired to do so by people that were more able to hold those mm -hmm. things and not be destroyed by them. So yeah, I think I tend to pedestalize whatever that experience is that like nines have. Yeah, it's mm. bizarre. I, I avoided the Enneagram for a long time because I don't like being put in a box. Um, but I literally had a, a, a friend, um, Brad, who's a counselor, point out that he likes the Enneagram because it helps us understand the boxes that we've already been placed in ourselves mm. because of the way that we learn to cope with the world. Um, that's the only reason I decided to get that's interested a, in this. A great reason. Yeah. Yeah, wow. How does it feel to... Be left out of the conversation. Well, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm fine. I want you, you want to I want, something? no, I want both of you to succeed in this conversation. <laughs> Do you want to challenge us with something? <laughs> that was really good. That was really also, good. Neither of you laughed at my joke earlier about how your mom is a 
two and your dad's a seven. Did you hear that? And I said, you shouldn't be a nine. Yeah. <laughs> neither of you. No, I, so okay. neither I of laughed at it. I laughed I'm at sorry. It. I think I was so like on my train of thought. No, no, like, no. you know, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I'm do like think that thinking about it. I <laughs> you're tearing up thinking about it. <laughs> Trying to hold it in. <laughs> she had to come back to it. I need credit. I need. I need I just, everyone I need to be valid. I need. This is. I need to. This three. is me needing to know. I achieved oh, something today on this podcast. Oh, um, and you know what? Um, there's a chance that you achieved that goal prior to you know circling back to it without ever knowing it. You know, whoever's listening to this could have been like, they got oh, a good chuckle. This is the funniest. That, that was the funniest so thing true. said, you know? What a time yeah. warp too. That's in the future. Yeah, in the future. Somebody's going to listen future. to this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I I don't know. The Enneagram is, it, it is neat. And I've enjoyed learning yeah. little bits about it. I want to, I want to like dive into it more. But yeah, uh, there are also some people that like creep me out with the Enneagram. Oh yeah. It's gotten weird. Yeah. Like I feel like I, yeah. I have the privilege Coaches. of entering in before it was on Instagram, but now I, it's I, on I Instagram. fully agree with, I fully agree with that. But anyways, yeah, <laughs> I um, do think that I, I do think that the, like just, just boiling us down to nine, a nine and an eight. I do think that we work well together because of those two personalities. Yeah. What what a, when you guys each other. go into a production like a story something fresh what is what does that look like for you two like are you both just talking through it from the first step or is one of you only talking to client or like yeah what is that it depends yeah. it depends uh, I I mean there are often times that I wouldn't say often times there are times where I'm talking to the client and even maybe CC and Sam but he's so like heads down editing that it's just like I think I've communicated everything to him but we show up to the like film and, and he's I, like oh so what are we filming today oh, <laughs> yeah. good so, question. Yeah. so those are th those experiences have happened um, uh, in my most professional like space I, I have a call sheet you know set up and I have um uh, pre-production notes and we have a full conversation this is what we're, what we're going in on uh, but yes I usually I'm like the one responsible for doing that kind of stuff it's not always um, and then there are the times too where both Sam and I are like talking through an idea that like we're gonna do it's like a the the um Cole Sager spot's a great example. Like I had an idea, but like him and I, it was a very back and forth, back and forth mm. symbiotic, like, yeah. um, conversation where we were like trying to figure out, okay, so like, what's the story technically? Like, how are we going to do this? Um, how many people do we need for this? Like the, the, what's the limited, like the, the least amount of people we could do this with because it was in the middle of COVID and it was May of last year. Mm. Um, and so um, those kind of things. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't have a clear cut answer for you. No, that's cool. Other it's than, like, it's different every time. It's different. Maybe. Yeah. yeah so. That's cool. Yeah. I'm always endlessly curious about that stuff. Dive yeah. bar production. I need to stop dive referring to. I love it. I, I will say, I, I, mean I will say, I like the dive bar production idea. Um, and, and, um, when you leave here today, notice the art on the wall, um, Mitch's great, great, great uncle. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a bar here in town, Durkin's liquor bar and they have, I've been there before. Okay. Sweet. So that building was actually a speakeasy. Yeah. Downstairs in the twenties. Oh, sick. That's and when they, vintage. when, when, when Durkins bought the building and they went to remodel it, they found this mural on the wall downstairs mm -hmm. and they found, um, f distant f relatives of whoever the mural artist was and it's Midge's dad. And they, we got to go in and take some pictures of the mural before they, um, covered it all up with new drywall. That's how he paid his bar tab. Literally. It's how he paid his bar tab. 
in the twenties oh, is with sick. art. So yeah. the the you keep talking about this dive bar vibe, but like yeah. paying yeah. off bar tabs with art. Rebrand <laughs> is yeah. films. Yeah. Dive bar dive bar films. Films, yeah. yeah. Dive bar studios. <laughs> yeah. It's a reminder <laughs> on um, the wall all the sick. time. That's that's what we'll be when we produce something with you. It'll be a dive, dive bar, bar production. Dive yeah. Bar production. It's yeah. actually pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like, cool. I like, I like that there's a good story there too. Yeah. Versus like, you know, when somebody gets a tattoo and you ask like, what does that mean? And they're like, oh yeah. Like, uh, you know, it's circle of circle of life. And you're like, you, you just like the way that that looks and that's <laughs> totally fine. You just got to own it, you know? Yeah. Or like it was, well, it was like, they had a book of things I could pick. And it was the first one on the list that I thought was neat. Yeah. It was like one of those free tattoo giveaways. And they're like, I just want people to think that I like. I got a $20 Tuesdays. Yeah. I got a free, (laughs) I got a free tattoo. Really? Put some, put some frozen peas on it. It looks infected. (laughs) What movie is that? I'm going to say your hot rod. It's not hot rod, but. I also thought you were just actually telling me something in that moment. I was like, (laughs) oh no. Nope. There's probably one person who's going to get that movie reference. And it's my wife and she'll never listen to this podcast. What is it? I can't remember if it's pitch perfect or if it's. That um, sounds like pitch perfect. Man. It it also made me think of um, uh, Jonah Hill in. It's like something Jonah Hill in Wolf of Wall Street would have done. His character. Um, we need to, uh, the, we need to let, okay. Bridesmaids. <laughs> it's bridesmaids. <laughs> um, she's her, her roommates and, um, her roommate's sister. Um, uh, what's, 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 what's this lady's name? Her name is, what's the actress's Rebel. name? Rebel, Rebel Wilson. Oh. Wilson. Yep. Uh-huh. She, she comes into the room and she's like, I got this free tattoo. And then she shows it off and she says it's a Mexican drinking symbol. And the lady's like, that looks infected. You should put some, some frozen peas on it. And then in the background of the conversation, you see her dumping a bag of peas on her back. (laughs) And now that's, that's our go-to inside joke. My wife and I, did you get a free tattoo? I always really love it when people describe scenes from movies that are supposed to be very funny. Yeah. always. It's painful to listen sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of movies. Cause we need to wrap this up. We really do at this yeah, point. Yeah. Like uh, I, so our typical like close to the podcast is asking kind of like favorite film. Oh, <laughs> um, Let's lately. The room. Yeah. Um, or, uh, and, or I would say favorite director or in your field, if you want to talk about DPs, mm. like, like somebody who's inspiring you, like a film that's touched you lately or, and or a uh, director DP that's um, inspired you as of late? Man, this question always makes me feel a little anxious because I'm not very good with names. So I'll like remember the title of a movie and then totally forget the director. We have something called IMDB here. Excellent. Yeah, okay. it's, okay. Uh, it's, you know, I open. Or I just, I, mi- I like chronically mispronounce people's names that I are people that I really respect. We so. actually had a guest on here that made a request to, um, cause, cause he's pretty, you know, in his space, like well-known and he was, he called us up afterwards. He's like, Hey, can you remove the spot where I said this person's name? Because I mispronounced it because oh, no. <laughs> he felt super bad. Yeah. Um, That's just a real thing. Case. Yeah. That's so. a real thing. Anyways. <clears throat> yes. Um, don't feel bad. We're, you know, we're dive bar here. Do you, everyone mispronounces everything thing. Yeah. 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 Everything. At, at I think part. we're officially changing the name of our little LLC here. Okay. Ground zero. Glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, favorite film, kind of a moving target, but I think what you would find on my letterbox still stands true. I'm just going to, na- I'm just going to name the four that are on there if that's okay. Yeah. We talk about letterbox on here cool, plenty. Cool. So oh, great. Good, yeah. Great. Um, as long as it's not soul, I'm okay with that. Oh, is that a, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> no, we've just talked about it's soul all, the all. last three podcasts. Uh oh, great. And so, and it's a hot like jab. Yeah. We have it's an inside joke. That's really what it is. I'll, I'll I'll fill you in here in a second. Cool, cool. Anyways, go. <laughs> what are your top four on Letterbox? <laughs> yes, my top four. Uh, actually, let's see if I get this right. Um, Short term twelve is an old favorite. Uh, that was like an early Brie Larson 
moment. Uh, Dustin, Dustin Crickerton. I'm going to say his name wrong. That's Don't worry right. about it. That's, yeah, I'm just not going to say the director's name. Uh, her is a, another old favorite. Um, I love Eighth Grade. That movie it made me cry not during the movie, but afterwards at the dive bar that I went to with my friends to decompress the movie. Naturally at a dive bar. All right, what are you I'm trying say? to find you on, on oh, your... Oh, I don't have that. So anyways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I think the fourth one on there is A Ghost Story, which uh, is a perfect segue into how much I love uh, Andrew Joe's Palermo's work. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. A Ghost Story. A Ghost Story. It's kind of bizarre. The director of that piece, whose name I'm also not remembering, I think he directed like... What was that weird animated, like Pete's Dragon oh, okay. or like weird? Yes. Yeah. It's like the same director and it just does not seem possible that he made that movie and also this movie because it's yeah. like this wild poetic story about time and death and love and it's like very minimal and atmospheric and it's about a ghost. It's really lovely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Right awesome. On. It's good. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, eighth grade was uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bo Burnham really made something. Yeah. Yeah. Also, do do either, are your kids, are either of them girls? No, wait, multiple children? We both have girls. We both have daughters. Oh, yeah. So my daughter is 16 months. Sam's daughter is two and a half. Yeah. Dang. So we, my daughter knows. Little ways. Yeah. We've got a long ways to go. My daughter does know one word. Very, what is it? very prominently. One, the only word that she really uses right now is no. Mm. Mm. It's painful. That sounds painful. Yeah, read. I think that might be her only word too. Oof. I just love, I love how Bo Burnham, did, have you heard the story of how he like found the actress? Yes. Or like why he went with that choice. Yeah. It was maybe the same. She was, at, she was, tri- he went to all these different high schools and, and um, she was trying to act like she was popular. She was trying to act this way. And he saw it in her that she was like, she was really this uncomfortable, uncomfortable uh, middle school, high schooler Mm -hmm. and, and um, saw right through it. And it was like the perfect person to actually play this role of someone who's trying to be more personality wise. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I listened to her interviewed on the A24 podcast. Yeah. Oh, how was that? It was good. It was yeah. good. Like her mom, I believe, was like on the other side of the glass. <laughs> like, you know, like there, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah. totally makes sense. So just, yeah. Yeah. I just love how like, oh, what was it? He found um, like during his research, like all of these like YouTube accounts with like, you know, five or 10 views of like these young kids yeah. acting like they had followers. And then he, I think he decided, because he maybe originally thought it could be a, a boy, but then he was like, no, like girls are just so much more like emotionally aware of themselves in a way that's yeah. so uncomfortable at that age yeah. and like can verbalize things in a different way. I just, I was yeah. wowed that it was such an intimate young female story directed by a guy in the same way, like, um, man, uh, Nomadland, Chloe Zhao, yeah. Yeah. like, I think originally from Beijing, but tells the most intimate American stories. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's wild to me when yeah. it's like done well, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. So you've seen the writer then? No. Oh, yeah, we both. Okay. Goodness. So we both need to watch the writer cause Mitch won't. Is that the I, other I, Chloe? Yeah. 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 And yep. he feels like Mitch has yeah, made it very clear person. that Nomadland was okay. But like the writer is, mm. is, is phenomenal. I am. I try not to show my cards too much because I don't like spoilers. I don't like, and I also don't like to overhype things because people have told me this is the best film. You are going to yeah. love it. And then I go and I'm like, yeah, it's not that good. Like, mm. yeah. Um, but just as neutral or like monotone as I can say, I think the writer <laughs> is what won her the Oscar or won her the nominations and the awards. Um, I think those are the better, or like the, that, yeah. that film deserved it. Nomad yeah. land is it's good. Yeah. It's just not, it's just not, you've done a good job of not playing up the writer for me. Just like you, you haven't built up hype. 
the what you have done inversely is create um, this sense of disappointment every time I tell you that I watched a movie yeah. this weekend. You're like, hey, so I watched the Kodachrome. Writer. I didn't ask you to watch Kodachrome. I asked you to watch The Writer. That's what I said. I also just like how the cadence in your voice shifts so dramatically it when does. you try to not infuse it with passion. Yes, and preference. I can tell you this. Our little podcast recorder over here mm -hmm. has a noise gate on it that I had to turn off because when Mitch gets serious, the noise gate shuts off his voice. No, no. Yeah. The noise gate does not like my voice. And these <laughs> microphones, <laughs> these microphones are quiet by nature. Mm. Uh, so we typically run them through something called a cloud lifter. We could probably do that here. Huh. We probably could. It actually, to be honest with you, it was doing a good job. Like I had to tone it down a little bit. Once I put all of the, um, the compressor and all the little things on it, it seemed like it equaled out. Um, but the only issue that I run into is that when you get dramatic, yeah. my voice, it, it, it has a low register and a, and a high and it's just constantly mm -hmm. changing. So I would be terrible in like in front of the camera. Man. Um, so what was I going to say? Let's, I want to hear what you've watched cause you, I brought up Kodachrome um, yeah. and, um, you can bring up something else if you want, but I've been watching this show called made for love on HBO max. And it's not the funniest show that I've ever watched, but it's like, I need something. <laughs> and so it's, it's good. It's good. Um, it has that, uh, what's her name? The actress in, uh, um, Palm Springs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. yep. Which she also plays, um, Leo Jordan Belfort's first wife in Wolf of Wall Street. I did not yep. remember that until I just rewatched that movie huh. with Sydney. Yeah. Yep. Um, but anyways, it's a bit, it's, I don't know how many years out into the future, this guy runs this company called Google which is obviously Google <laughs> um, really subtle. and uh, he has this product idea called made for love and it's putting a chip into like lovers minds like so they can read each other's thoughts and it's a, in his mind it'll make them closer and they will like whatever and so they live in this like cube which is a virtual world and she all of a sudden one day realizes like the path that she's going down and that she's going to eventually be chipped. And so she, she, uh, leaves, she jets, she comes from a, like a poor, this back. is not a black mirror. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not. Ray, like Ray Romano is plays her dad. Um, so, you know, he adds some, some light to it. He adds some light. Anyways, to it. it's good. It's, it's, it's all right. I, I recommend it. Um, yeah, there's some other stuff. Superstore. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about shows right now because yeah, super emotional. I cried so hard at the end say, of that. Say the title again. Superstore. Superstore. It's a, it's, it's, it's huh. a, it's a network show. Huh. NBC, I think. Check it out. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's basically it's the office, but like, Walmart, but Walmart. Huh? Yeah. So it's cool. phenomenal. <clears throat> so it's like the employees of a Walmart, but it's not Walmart. It's a store called cloud nine, but it is Walmart. And so you get to see like the cutaways are like, <laughs> there's a customer going through the, the frozen meat section and they pull out all these like steaks and then they're going and they stop in the next, in like another aisle and they decide they don't want all these meats. So they spend, just take them out and place them on a shelf and keep going. Yeah. And then the meats are just there the rest of the episode. You oh. keep seeing them over on the <laughs> Or there's like <laughs> pack and plays set up in the middle of the store, or like in the uh, kids on display. Like, yeah. On display in the, in the baby section. And like mom realizes that the cart's getting full and like puts the baby in the pack, pack and play and, and just like keeps like going. she'll come back later. It's like she'll come back and get the kid yeah. later anyways. So it's very like, <laughs> wow, it's, it's good. 
cool. It's good. Yeah, Anyways, but out. you know, I got a little, I got a little emotional on the, on the finale, which rarely happens for yeah. me on a, on a show, on mm-hmm. a show. Yeah. I cried in the end of arrival. Like I cry every oh, time yeah. I watch that movie. Yeah. 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 That makes more sense to me. But I'll I'll check out. <laughs> that makes show. more sense. <laughs> she she has all this hatred for me now that I'm eight. She's now she's staring at me. Yeah, like, waiting for I, you yeah to you're definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I want to empower people. He's you know, at a, around he's, he's a healthy eight, right? I'm now. at least attempting to be. Yeah. So no. Yeah. No, I, I believe that. Um, yeah. Anyways. No. So what were you going to say? Um, no, I watched recently. I watched two films uh, that are of note uh, Palmer on Apple TV plus mm-hmm. J- Justin Timberlake is the lead. Um, that one was emotional, but Kodachrome uh, on Netflix. It's a story about um, Ed. I, I pull it up on Letterboxd. Ed Harris uh, is one of my favorite actors ever. Um, and Jason Sudeikis, Jason Sudeikis, uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Mm-hmm. Um, Ed Harris is this famous film photographer, this documentary photographer, and um, he is dying and he has two, he has has a few rolls of film that of Kodachrome, Kodak Kodachrome film. And they're going to, they're, they're discontinuing um, this film and the developer that it needs. And um, he needs to go across the nation to get to drop off this film to get developed um, and he is, he's, he's dying. He's got this crazy cancer and, um, he needs his son to drive him across the Jason Sudeikis to drive him across the country. And he and his son have a very, um, contentious relationship. And Jason Sudeikis is like, I'm not doing it, but he goes on a road trip with his dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is emotional, um, my wife makes fun of me for finding it emotional a because it's a estranged father-son relationship Eh, ed harris reminded me more of my grandpa than anything but like um there's also the film like i'm very interested in film um and um, right after i watched this film i went in to drop off film at our local shop up here camera corral and there's a whole kit of beautiful old Hasselblad 500 series cameras, all with the, these lenses and this whole stuff. And it's beautifully kept. The cases are perfect condition. There's the old Hasselblad travel cases and everything. And she told me that it's on consignment. The guy who owns it's dying and um, it's up for sale. And m- my wife, I'm telling her about these cameras and she's like, I don't know if you're emotional because like you really want these beautiful pristine condition cameras or if you're emotional because you just watched Kodachrome and now this actual photographer is dying and you can't stand to see the cameras up for sale and keeping it real. Yeah. Probably the second one, huh? So my buddy, my buddy, um, Alex Rivera gave Kodachrome on Letterboxd a three star review and it's really killing me because (laughs) I really liked the film. <laughs> I gave it way more than three stars. Damn. But you know, when it speaks to you, it speaks to you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Man. I just um, rewatched, well, the first season of Fleabag. Have you, have you Never all? Watched no. it. Oh. Never watched it. I know it's won a bunch of awards, but no. Man. I have it's, not. It's, I mean, I don't know if it would be to y'all's taste, but like, I the second season of that, the final season like transcended into the spiritual for me. It was like, it starts off real raw and gritty. Like don't watch it with your kids around for the first couple episodes. And then it like, it just does something. It like flips and you're like, oh, this actually is just about everything and everyone. Is this, is that, um, is Eva green in that? That's a great question. I think she is. And then the, Gosh, what is her name? Oh, she Phoebe Waller Bridge. The... From she's in the farewell. The older actress. Oh, I don't know. Anyways, I know I, I I'm I'm certain that she is. Great. I'm just trying. I'm trying to remember names. You know, that's, know. that's, that's where I'm it's, coming up. It's so hard. Um, so many. But speaking of gentrification, kidding. Uh, 
you brought up kidding. Well, she said, as I'm making she a said joke. Fleabag is like about everything. Yeah. And then I thought of kidding. Yeah. I haven't seen kidding. If that, if there's one show that describes the kinds of stories that Mitch and I want to tell here at Dive Bar Films, it's um, kidding. I'll have to watch that. Yeah. Like right now. I'll yes. just go yeah, I, now and go yeah, watch that. Okay. Well, <laughs> great. <laughs> but seriously, I like want to cry just thinking about it. <laughs> um, it is five Oh five. Yeah. We should, we should make yeah, this. Should we, we should wrap. I told my wife I would be home at four 30. <laughs> yeah. My wife texted me at four 33. Will you be home soon? So I can get ready. I have not gotten a text from my wife, which lets me know for sure that, um, I have veered into the passive aggressive territory. Oh. I made a mistake. Mm. Uh-oh. Well, let's uh, end on that. <laughs> Great. That's a wrap. Uh, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thanks, you guys. No, Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Seriously. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> let's go. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for listening. The Cine Therapy Podcast is produced by me, Darian Mack, and Inland Film Co. Special thanks to Megan Clark for joining us for a conversation on this podcast. If you are interested in connecting with Megan, we listed her social media accounts in the description of this page. That's a wrap.